Hi, it's Jonathan. I want to talk today um, about the, the K3 turntable system, specifically this video about the K3 tone arm, which was designed and built for this system, specifically for the system by Frank Schroeder in Berlin. And um, before we get into the arm, you know, this whole package deserves some, some mention in the relationship of the arm to the turntable, to the console. You know, it was all created to be, you know, an ensemble, to be a whole. And this goes back really to the way broadcast professional studio turntables, radio station turntables, were made from the 1940s with decks like the RCA 70 series. I'm not sure whether we've done a video on, on those. I'd like to do one on the 70D if we haven't. That's an amazing turntable that RCA created. Fairchild also, and EMT. Uh, those were three of the big ones. They all made the turntables, tone arms, cartridges, um, the phono electronics, and the consoles because they had to. Because they were selling these things. They were too expensive, too big to go into people's homes. They made uh, less expensive, smaller models for domestic use. They, they were going into professional studios and applications where they, they needed to create the entire ensemble so that it would all work perfectly together. Um, and that is a, a way of approaching this that's lost. I don't know any company today that's, that's doing that. I'm sure there is one, but I, I don't know of any. Uh, that is exactly why we wanted to, to make this. And, and we have all those turntables. We have 70C, 70Ds, uh, got a BBC 950 wide body, a bunch of the Fairchild uh, decks, arms, cartridges, phono stages. Why do we have those? I'm not a collector. They're the reference, the reference for this. In other words, we needed to make something that would basically redefine in performance, at least, the very least, what a turntable is, can be, which meant making something better than anything that's pre-existing. I don't consider the decks, no matter how expensive that are made today, and some of them are very, very expensive, north of $500,000, I don't consider them to be actually a, a reference for anything. Uh, what we wanted to do was, was make something that was better than what some of the world's largest, most sophisticated te technology corporations, RCA, EMT, had made and surpass that and do it by a long shot. And do it also with a sense of style which is unfortunately really quite absent in high-end audio, where the designs, to, my, to my, uh, my sensibility, are extremely derivative, uh, tiny uh, variations on pre-existing themes, most of which have nothing to do with what the thing is supposed to do in the first place. I've done a video on um, K3, the turntable itself. There will be a video on the console this video is going to be about the arm. And, and you know, this was a collaboration with a bunch of extremely talented people and even Bucknell University doing a finite element analysis on the body and the platter. But you know, without Anna Gujic, the architect and, and designer in Rome who created this console with me and worked on the aesthetics of the actual turntable, this wouldn't have existed. Krebs, Richard Krebs, who's the engineer responsible for the mechanical design and, and actually a lot of the physical design of this turntable, the world's greatest expert on direct drive turntables. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be anywhere without, without them. And Frank Schroeder, who I would argue is the world's greatest tone arm designer ever over the course of 30 years, he's come up with one incredible, innovative, uh, you know, iconic design after another. The reference arm, we have that over here, which uses magnets, patented, been copied by, by other people, including some big companies. Um, the BA arm, the broadcast arm, which has an extremely innovative bearing mechanism. The CB arm, which is also in production. But for this turntable, I really wanted 
to have something that was particular specific to this deck and that, that met it not, not just in terms of aesthetics but in terms of performance. Frank has been making arms primarily using wood, wooden wands over these decades. And in this case, the conversation started already several years ago, well, several years before, several years before this, this came out. Frank, how would you, how would you make an arm if, if you knew that the turntable was gonna be completely metal, iron in this case? What would you do? What would you like to do? You gave him free reign. And Frank was trained as a watchmaker um, he has an extremely brilliant design sensibility as well as a mechanical engineering uh, talent. And the result is this extremely unique in appearance, and I will explain also in functionality, tone arm, that was created specifically for K3. So this arm is, is metal. It's an alloy of aluminum. We'll leave the actual alloy and material to be, uh, say, a trade secret as long as with the head shell. This arm is 3D printed metal. How do you do that? Uh, there are companies that 3D print plastic tone arms. I consider that to be an extraordinarily bad idea um, because 3D printed plastic does not sound very good to me. Wood sounds amazing, but Frank was interested in exploring the possibilities of this manufacturing process, which is being pioneered um, by certain German institutes. This process involves what is called SLM, selective laser melting. So a bed of, of particles of the alloy are laid down and a laser comes and melts layer by layer, the particles to form the solid parts of the tone arm. Now people have said, oh yes, it looks like an erector set or a girder or, but you know, it's funny how, how our minds work. You know, you look at something, you compare it with what you know, and then you say, I'm done. But then you'd miss why this is so beautifully done and designed because it, there's no girder or erector set that's actually like this. Each, each structural element does not repeat in the sense of its size and placement. It starts off wide here, for example, at the top, and it goes narrow here. Each one of these struts does not repeat. And in fact, there is no way to manufacture this tone arm except by this extremely expensive process of selective laser melting. You can't machine it. You cannot cast it. So this was a very good example of using the manufacturing um, innovations and potential inherent in this new technology to create something that hasn't been done before. The reason that this was done like this is to create an extraordinarily rigid, lightweight structure that was as non-resonant as possible. The fact that it's also really stunning and beautiful is a welcome, is a welcome you know, addition. But um, the real innovation to my mind with this tone arm is the way in which the counterweight is executed. The counterweight as well as the arm base are in solid bronze. But as you can see, as I move this up and down, the counterweight is not the usual stub that's an extension of the arm wand. Nope. The counterweight is on this bearing, which is itself suspended on this little thread here, with a lower center of gravity than the rest of the, um, these elements. And this decoupling, while it may not be obvious, is there to prevent the inevitable energy that is generated by the stylus in the cartridge and which always tran uh, is transferred down the length of the arm wand 
in any turntable system, and it, it, it ends up in the counterweight stub. And there it's briefly stored and then reflects back into the system. That reflection back, well, we've all been dealing with that for many, many decades, probably close to 100 years. So it is really revolutionary to hear this thing because you find out what a tone arm can sound like when that energy is not reflected back because it doesn't see this counterweight, you see? And so the time domain is executed so much more precisely because you don't have a reflection of stored energy coming back into the system and interfering with what the cartridge is currently trying to reproduce. So this ingenious execution of a counterweight, which is also beautifully done, it, it um, um, loosens here and then you can move it back and forth to adjust uh, vertical tracking force, is such a simple, beautifully done way to solve a problem that most, uh, most tone arm designers, turntable designers, wouldn't even th think of as a problem in the first place. And that's really good engineering. You know, from, from an aesthetic standpoint, I, I, I put this watch on today because I, I thought, wow, you know, this watch really to me is like what I was trying to do with, with this turntable system. This was, this was designed, made in 1955, and the bracelet and the watch itself, the case, were all designed together of a piece. I think this is uh, reference 9083. And, you know, typically a, a, a brand, a high-end brand, and this was a high-precision chronometer, I believe, typically, you know, the watch band would go with this watch or that watch or the case. They wouldn't, but in this case, it's kind of unusual, uh, for this company at least, to design them all of a piece. It really, it worked, it, the integrity, the cohesion of it is so impressive. And I don't see that in the way audio is designed today and certainly not turntables. It's more like, we'll design a turntable and then you go find the stand to put it on. We'll make a turntable, be a really good turntable. You put whatever tone arm you want. And you can use any tone arm that'll fit. There's a rear, there's a rear arm mount. But with this, this was so expensive to do the R&D and to make each one of these arms that we agreed, Frank and I, that this arm would be, would come with this turntable, just like this was all sold as a piece. There's no way to take this apart. We only sell Frank Schroeder's K3 tone arm with the K3 turntable. So if you don't want this arm, and I don't know why you wouldn't, because this is, to me, the best arm that's ever been made, um, you can take it off and put another tone arm on here. You can put whatever arm you like. But the only way to get this tone arm is by buying the K3 system. Um, we are working on a K5, the follow-up, which will be less expensive, and I believe that Frank has a little surprise for us, maybe a less, a less costly version of this arm. But I'm so happy and proud that we were able to come up with this ensemble because this is the best sounding arm I've ever heard. When you look at it, you understand what, it, what it's for, why it was designed the way it was. I hope that this video is a bit of an explication as to why certain things were done. Oh, let's, one almost forgot. The arm uh, mount is uh, going back to camera lenses, and I'm gonna turn this, you see how it goes up and down? It's a, a bayonet mount as for old school camera lenses made out of bronze. This is made in Germany by a man who works on camera lenses, and this was, made specifically for this turntable in solid bronze. The execution of this, to me, is without parallel, without compare performance. But, you know, it's so cool to have something that was 
was designed and executed as a piece. And you know, like, like these cool old watches, you know, this works. K3 system. Video coming up next on, on the console. That's the next video.